prayer. Amen. At this time, if you open your hymnal to number 18. Good morning. morning. Oh, that's a good one. Welcome. Uh, My name is John Lynch. Um, It's good to be back in New Salem. Um, It's been a few years since I've been up here. Uh, It's nice to see all the familiar faces, see some new faces. And I got my Dane Fuchs bear hug this morning. So I'm I'm good to go the rest of the day. Um, If you look at the church announcements there uh, on the the opposite page. Couple things. um, The Board of Christian Ed will be meeting right after the service. Also, we'll have chili feed and um, a potato bar downstairs right after the service also. Um, And I will be saying the the meal grace for that before uh, we go down. Okay, at this time, the Sunday school will be singing. Okay, Austin's here.
I'll fill the time while the Sunday school is coming. No, uh, one more quick announcement is we will be meeting shortly as a pulpit committee right after service. So those on the pulpit committee will be in the room we usually are in. Thank you. That's right. Normally on Sundays when the Sunday school sings, we have the snacks and coffee out in the atrium. With the potato bar and stuff going on after church downstairs, we will be moving all of that downstairs. So come on down, whether you want to have potato bar or some of Loretta's cookies and coffee. Thank you.
A good friend is a blessing from God. The Bible says that a good friend should be by the side of a helpless friend. Even if your friend becomes an enemy and he tries to harm you, there are also many Bible verses about love. Sweet friendships refresh the soul and awaken our hearts with joy. For good friends are like the anointing oil that yields the fragrant incenses of God's presence. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 8-10 through 10. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others, as faithful stewards of God, grace in its various forms. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 9. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart, and the pleasantness of a friend that springs from their heartfelt advice. John chapter 15, verses 12 through 14. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born God of God and knows God. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more you can see the day drawing near. Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. John chapter 4, verse 8, anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. 1 John 4.7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 39. And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And our final song is Friends Forever.
I have just one other thing to add to what um, Austin said this morning. Uh, the search committee will be meeting again this morning, and, and we're diligently uh, moving forward with our search process. And, and um, I, I'm hoping that um, everyone received uh, the questionnaire in the mail this past week. Um, they need to be returned uh, by next Sunday. And uh, we, we look forward to the input uh, that the congregation will, will give us. And um, just uh, an additional thought there, um, uh, there should have been two copies sent to each family and, and we understand that uh, there are going to be families that uh, have confirmands in their family as well. So if you need other copies, please uh, come to the church and, and grab another, uh, another copy. And um, that questionnaire is not uh, strictly for members of Peace Church. So. Uh, if, if you're a, a visitor here or a, a, a member that, or an individual that uh, uh, frequents Peace Church and you're not a member, yeah, we welcome you to fill out those uh, questionnaires as well because uh, we're looking for direction uh, from everyone that attends church here. So, so please feel free, so, free to do so. Um, I would add, uh, make sure you keep your uh, pastor search committee people in your prayers. It's a, it's a, it's a big commitment, uh, not only time-wise, but for the investment of your church. I just, I was, I was the chair the last time uh, Peace Church looked for a pastor when we brought Pastor Eddie here. So I know how much time it takes. So. Keep those people in your prayer. If you'll stand, um, turn to in your hymnal to number 234, He is Lord. And you'll sing it twice.
O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker.
Thank you, Michelle and the choir. That was awesome. At this time, um, if you look in the back of your bulletin, there's prayer requests. Also, I was handing a note that um, LaVon Samuel fell and broke her ankle. So please put her on your list. Put the pastor search on your list. Are there any other prayer requests? Okay. Oh, we have a praise. Sort of kind of both in between, I guess. Um, it's kind of hard for me, but anyway, you all understand. February um, 9th was the um, anniversary of the date of my son's passing, uh, Mark, in the military. And um, every year since his death, uh, his buddies and friends and so forth have have just remembered that day and um, with a, an invitation to uh, we all meet to, for us to meet down at the AMVETS, which is perfectly uh, normal for soldiers, sailors, and so forth, ex-Marines, whatever, and parents and loved ones. Anyway, they uh, we did this again Tuesday, uh, Thursday whatever night <laughs> night anyway i just i just want you to know how you know new salem has really got has raised some great kids <laughs> into wonderful leaders in our uh, community and so forth the Earhart boys and so forth and um, um it was just such a nice there wasn't a big commotion or anything but everybody just sat around a big old table and we had a little dinner and uh, thanks to uh, the AMVETS, somebody bought us our meal, I don't know, but that was nice also. So um, along with the Earhart boys, I'm going to ask a favor, and I, she's not around, and I didn't ask her, but that's the way it is, because we grew up together, we were in the womb together. Uh, Carol Earhart, Mrs. Ralph Earhart, is, she may still be in, in uh, Rochester, I don't know for sure, her daughter lives there, but they finally, she's had all this pain and so forth, and they've tried everything, so she's there, and they've diagnosed her with um, osteoporosis. So she's supposed to have a surgery, but guess what? You can't have a surgery if your bones are going to break. So, you know, figure out what kind of prayer we can uh, raise up for her, and uh, let's... Let's pray her into, they did give her an injection, so she's staying there to see how long it lasts. So anyway, I, uh, I just want you to keep our dear friend and <laughs> um, companion or whatever you want to call her. She, we're the same age, raised in the class of 65, so has a special place in my heart. So thank you, and thank you for raising such great kids and, and you can see it today it wasn't that something i tell you they just they just know how to worship thank you okay let's go to prayer and as she said sometimes we don't know what to pray just lift up the person or the situation in prayer dear heavenly father lord we just thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord, and we have so many reasons to be blessed in our lives, Lord, and there are situations where people are hurt or sick, Lord, and as we look on the back page of our bulletin, there are so many um, prayer requests and praises, Lord, that um, help us, Lord, to take time each day to lift up to others, Lord, not only our family, but our friends, our people in our community, Lord. Just help us, Lord God, to uh, be more aware of what is going around us during the day. And Lord, now as we pray the prayer that you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'll take our offering. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done for us, all that you've given us, Lord, and just help us remember that we need to give back, Lord, to you so that it can be used for others to raise up your kingdom, to help others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. be seated. Good morning again. It's nice to be here. It's always good to be back in New Salem. Uh, for those that don't know me, uh, my wife Jerry and I lived here. It's been almost 21 years now since we left. Uh, I used to be the high school principal here, so uh, kids, uh, if you want to know anything about your parents, I may know some things, so, so uh, see me after church. Um, today I'm going to be speaking about words, and this is directly mainly towards men, um, but women, you, you can listen to. Um, and... Because for us, for us men, words are very important in how we deal with people. Uh, we can either deal with them in a good way or in a bad way. Um, you know, today in the world, it seems like it should be easier for us to communicate with each other. But studies have found that people are talking actually less you know, you can say, well, I've got like 500 friends on Facebook, um, but who, who do we really talk to? And, and so communication, uh, even young people now um, are struggle with uh, um, talking to each other. Uh, I remember when I was a principal, I'd go up to kids and kids would be on their phone sitting. I said, you don't have to text each other, you're just right there. But in most cases, they weren't even texting the person next to them. They were texting somebody else. So we've kind of lost that. So I'll be talking about four parts of a man's life that speaks to, to him, to us. Um, 
in the world around him. I'm going to focus on words. Words of, of being a man, being a husband, being a father, and being a leader in the world. First one, and if you, if you kind of look at the way I framed it, if it's in the bulletin, I, I put uncommon, and I didn't spell it wrong. I just, at the end, I said M-E-N for men. So we need to be uncommon. The first one is just the words that we use as, as men. And in James 3, 9, it says that the tongue we, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. How many have ever heard of the term the ugly American? Um, it's, it's a phrase that's used when uh, people from the United States go across to another country. And we kind of act a certain way, kind of obnoxious and things like that. Well, the term I want to use is the ugly Christian. Because we have people who have come to know Jesus, they claim to be a Christian, but their dealings, their words towards other people, other Christians, is not what it should be. You know, with, with social media today, we can um, I heard somebody say once that, you know, when I was growing up, if you had an argument with somebody, you just uh, dealt with it in the playground after school or something. And, uh, or you just didn't say it because you didn't want to get beat up. But now with social media, you can say anything you want. And there's no repercussions. So we have to be careful. You know, because one day we may talk about how much we love God and then turn around and talk about how bad somebody else is. This is the person that James was talking about in, in chapter 3. He was talking about, the, you know, that we praise somebody, but then we turn around and we don't. We say good things about them. Not only are you killing your testimony by acting this way, but I'm sure God's going to have something to say to you at one point in this life or, or the next. You know, we can't all agree what's going on. You know, on, we can't agree on everything. But we can agree, agree that God has made all of us. And we're each special in his eyes. So we need to treat other people who are made in God's image special. That doesn't mean that, you know, we, need, we can't correct somebody. But we need to do it in a loving way. Here's a couple of challenge questions for you. What can you change to help reflect God better? What can I do each day to reflect God? How can I evaluate the way I speak to people in person or online? Because God wants us to watch our words, be true to God, and to love other people. The second part of men and their words are toward our wives. Proverbs 10, 14 says, A wise man stores up knowledge, but with the mouth of a foolish, ruin is at hand. The words to our wives are some of the most important words that we will ever speak. Men, we are often our worst enemies when it comes to communication. Whether you are newly married or Jerry and I have been married over 37 years. There are times where I don't say what I should have said. Or what I said was not what I should have said. You know, it's just, guys, sometimes I feel like we can just put the, the foot in our mouths. And, you know, that's just the way we are, but we need to um, work on those things. We should, have, we should come to the understanding that the way you and your wife communicate will determine the happiness of your ho household. Uh, there's a little phrase that Jerry and I always laugh about, and it says, Remember, happy wife, happy life. Yeah. yeah. 
Thanks for that amen there, Dane. Because men, by nature, are fixers. We want a small explanation of the problem while we put on our hero outfit and cape so we can spring into action and fix the problem. Well, if you truly knew your wife, a small explanation probably is not going to do it. And sometimes when we try to fix it, it gets worse. You know, I've I've been in education for, well, 39 years. And somebody asked me, what's one thing, one one surprising thing in your profession? And and, And I thought about it, but I think it's not only for education, but for all walks of life is how our inability to communicate effectively. And one of those things is to listen. And men, sometimes we're just not good listeners. We don't hear things that people are saying, and especially our wives. I heard a joke. Guy was telling his buddy, yep, my wife told me I have two faults. The first one is I don't listen. The second one is I can't really remember what the second one is. You know, sometimes we're, we, we tune out, so we need to do a better job of listening. God doesn't want that, our, that for our marriages. He wants clear, sound, truthful, kind, and open communication with each other. And for us guys, that can be hard. It can be hard to have open communication, to actually tell our spouse or tell anybody how we really feel. The number one thing that I pray for during my quiet time is wisdom. Not that I'm going to be challenging my inner King Solomon, but rather I want to know the mind of God in every situation in my life. I want to store up knowledge, and I want to communicate effectively with my wife. Young married people, I mean, us experienced uh, husbands that have been married a while, we understand sometimes it, it doesn't get easier as you are married. We have to continue to work at um, that, that communication in our, in our marriage. Um, you know, I also heard a thing that says, marriage is not for the faint-hearted. It takes work. Jerry and I have done a number of marriage Bible studies. Actually, we just finished one last night uh, that our pastor in our church had done. Um, and it's a way to keep our marriage at the forefront, to gain more knowledge. The more tools you have in your tool belt, the better you are equipped to handle the challenges that come around. One of the best books that we've uh, done is The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. It talks about the process of finding your love language and how you like to be communicated. Once you you and your wife have determined what your love language is, uh, some people have one, some may have a combination of two, then you understand how to communicate with each other. Jerry's is acts of service. Mine's gift giving. Uh, So earlier in our marriage, when I was giving her gifts and she didn't really seem appreciative of those gifts, I was hurt. But I wasn't cued into what her love language was, which was acts of service. Now, if I clean out the gutters, If I rake the lawn, if I fix something in the house, she feels loved. And to me, it's like, well, that's not how you love somebody. But in her world, that's that's how she feels loved. To me, I would like to give her gifts and that. Um, I don't give her flowers anymore because she got mad at me one time and, and, um, you know, she'd rather we do something or go out to eat, but not flowers. So now you know she's not getting flowers for Valentine's Day. So if I keep doing something in my love language, 
that's not hers, it's going to get frustrated. I'm going to get frustrated. She's going to get frustrated. It's important to learn how someone communicates and the communi then communicate that way towards them. It sounds very basic, but it's one of the most overlooked things when it comes to the communication. Questions. How do you and your wife communicate? Do you talk about how you communicate? When was the last time you looked at a book, did a marriage study? When was the last time you prayed for your wife? When was the last time you prayed with your wife? Number three, uncommon words for a dad. Um, I, I was a principal for 29 years. And in that time, I have a heart for young people. And the words that are used to, for, or towards our young people can have a very big impact, good or bad, in their lives. James 1, 19 says, Know this, my, be my beloved brethren, everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Parents, our kids should be our first and, I'd say, our most important mission field. Again, our words to our children will have some of the most important, will be some of the most important we speak. Their effect will have ripples to, in the generations to come, good or bad. Um, Jerry and I, I'm going to brag on my kids. Jerry and I have three kids, two boys and a girl. All are married. All are godly people. All are very respectful. That's what we tried to um, instill in them being positive. We also have three grandkids. Yeah. They're the best. Um, I truly believe that the boundaries that we set for them help them to understand what it takes to be a well-rounded, uh, Christ-focused person with hearts for others. But it was the words that we said to our children as they were growing up. As a dad, I had to decide, am I going to be their dad or am I going to be their friend? I see that too much now where parents are trying to be friends. Parents need, our kids need parents to be parents. Rem reminds me of um, Jerry and I worked at a, uh, treatment center for kids that were kicked out of Dallas and Fort Worth schools. We lived down there for six years, and one of the students came to me, and, and this class was only had six kids, five boys, one girl. But they are all severe ADHD, and they had a new teacher. He was an award-winning teacher down in South Texas. He could not handle them. He was trying to be their friend. I had the ringleader in my office one time, and he said, uh, I said, what's the deal? What is the problem? He looked at me and says, we need discipline, darn it. He didn't say darn it. <laughs> Even all kids need discipline. They want, our they want their parents to be parents. Sometimes it's, we, we think it might be easier to be a friend, but we need to be their parent. As I've told my kids and I've told my students that I've had, if I did not care about you, I would let you do whatever you want. They had to think about that for a second. The reason why there are rules in place is because I care about them. God has his Bible his instructions. He cares about us. Verbal abuse, in my mind, has zero, I have zero tolerance for it in, in this world. Now, with that being said, have there been things that I've said to my kids that um, I regretted saying? Yes. I've made mistakes. But what I've done is I've had to go to them, apologize, and ask for their forgiveness. 
that is huge with our kids. They see that, okay, yeah, I make mistakes, but I will acknowledge and ask for, for their forgiveness for that. That is big in that. And again, we need to listen. Man, we're, we're not good at listening. We need to listen to our kids. Sometimes less is more. It means we say less, we listen more when our kids are talking. Sometimes they just want to talk. We may, may want to jump in and fix whatever they're going through, give them advice. But a lot of times they just want us to listen to know that we're there for them. There are so many ways that my kids make me proud, but when they come to me and say, Dad, can I get your advice on something? Dad, thank you for the way you raised me. These are things that said to me when my kids were in their 30s. My youngest boy, who's a teacher down in Oaks, one, two months after he started, first year he came home, First, he said, adulting is kind of hard. The second thing is, he says, I, I, thank you, Mom and Dad, for the way you raised me. He's now seeing how, when you have good parenting, what that does for a student. If your past has a negative influence on the way you communicate with children, then it's time to, that you change. Look to God. Change how you're doing things. There are books upon books. You can get videos online. There are people in this church who are good references. Find, if you're a young couple, find an older couple to be a mentor. People that can ask advice, you can ask advice to. It's never too late to fix a relationship. Do you make time for your children other than just the basics? Do you spend time again worshiping with your kids? Have you, fathers, have you, if you have a daughter, take them on a date, just to the, you two. Moms, you do that with your sons. Parents, do that with both, all of your kids. Make time. They will notice. Remember, words leave scars. The last words are for the world. We are commanded to be the salt and light to the world. In Matthew 5, 13 through 16, Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out, trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A, a city on a hill cannot be hit, excuse me, cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it in an, under a ball. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify the Father in heaven. As Christians, we are called to set the bar high and then take that into the world to have an influence on our spouses, our family, our job, our community, our country, and the world. Being uncommon men in the community can range from being a good neighbor to volunteering in some church activity or something even louder, larger. The point is to be uncommon, you have to be active in your community, in your church. In spite of all the happy selfies that people post on social media, there are hurting people out there. And our city, our church has tons of ways that we can help. There are also great family activities. If there was ever a time for our country that needed uncommon men to stand up and be an example, it's now. Our country needs to see us in a variety of ways, not just as this sermon is focused on words. We need to be communicating with each other beyond the words. 
Are you uncommon in your job, your community, your country, your world? When was the last service po community service project that you were on? Are you willing to serve more than what you're doing now? These are things to ask. Finally, men, just remember, and women, our words are important. They can prop people up, they can tear people down. Every time we open our mouth, we must decide which words we are going to use. That means thinking before we speak. That is tough. Before I pray, just a reminder, guys, two more days until Valentine's Day. So if your wife doesn't like flowers, find something else. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for these people here. Lord, uh, Jerry and I have many great memories with the people in this church, this church, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you will be with them and bless them. Lord, as we go out, help us to remember our words, Lord. Help us, help us to use words that build up people and not tear them down. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to come and, and speak before these people. I pray that you will bless them this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is uh, number 526, Faith of Our Fathers. After this song, I will see, say the meal grace for our chili and potato bar. Dear Heavenly Father, bless our food that we're going to partake in. Bless it to the nourishment of our bodies. We thank you for all that you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed.